everybody. My name is Allison Rampa, and I'm a middle school teacher and a mother to a fantastic five-year-old. So right now during this quarantine, I am both teaching eighth grade through distance learning and also homeschooling a kindergartner. I am super privileged to be in this position where I can devote time and energy to thinking about and planning for home learning. And if it's helpful, I'd like to share a few tips, tricks, and direction to resources with parents who might be freaking out right now. Number one, you're doing great. I, I know it might not feel like it, but please give yourself a break. This is a really weird time and there is going to be an adjustment period. No one signed up for this. Be gentle with yourself. Be gentle with your kids, which I know is easier said than done. But I just want you to know that you are doing amazing. Also, I like your hair. Did you do something new with it or lost weight? You look great. Number two, routine. You might hate routines, but your kids love them, even if they say that they hate them. Hi, eighth graders. They actually love them. It provides stability and comfort. So if you can, get up at the same time every day. Take a shower, get dressed, eat food at food eating hours. It takes a bit of effort, but it really is worth it. I will post down below uh, a article here to Psychology Today uh, where it talks about the power of routine and how it helps us with our mental health. If you have a teenager, have them make their own schedule. Do they want to get up at 10 a.m. and then have a midnight bedtime? That actually sounds pretty great. I'd, I'd do that if I didn't have a five-year-old waking me up at 7 o'clock in the morning. Creating their own schedule and their own to-do lists can be very empowering for teenagers. But please fight the temptation to flip your sleep schedule. It is hard, I know. Teenagers are night-dwelling creatures like vampires. But there are lots of studies that actually link depression and anxiety to a lack of sunlight, and adolescents can be particularly sensitive to this. Again, there should be a link below uh, to psychologytoday.com article that talks about people who work the night shift and how it affects their mental health. When it comes to schoolwork, um, schedule your, hopefully your school has sent some suggested schedules along, but if not, um, here's one I made for my eighth graders, and that's a weekly schedule. And then I've also put a schedule in there for my uh, kindergartner, and that's a daily schedule. These are just suggestions. I know I've seen parents freak out after seeing a school schedule or how many hours per day a certain school has allotted for work. As teachers, we are always trying to over prepare. So if they have given you too many hours for your kid, that's fine. They know that some kids take a long time to do work. Sometimes kids fly through it. And so they're just wanting to provide you with as many resources as possible. So do what you can in the time that you have. We are all just trying to figure this thing out. Um, the National Board for Professional Teaching Standards suggests that for homeschooling, uh, one to two hours a day for elementary, two to three hours a day for middle school, three to four hours a day for high school, and plus encourage one hour a day for outside or recreational time. And if you want to check out that resource, uh, it's www.nbpts.org. We'll give you that information. But keep in mind that's for homeschooling. And you're not homeschooling. This is crisis schooling. We've never had something like this before. Unless you were born in and lived in 1918, which I have not, despite what my students might think. So breathe and do what you can. Number three, use checklists and timers. I like to do things in one hour or half hour increments, but keep a bell schedule, just like in school. That way your student knows to move from one thing to another. And if you're working from home, like me, that gives you some solid chunks of time to get stuff done that you need to get done. Number four, speaking of getting work done, use screens as tools for learning. I know, I know, we have been told over and over again to limit screen time. Well, guess what? That was then, and this is now. Mommy school, 
which is what my five-year-old calls it. Mommy school for my kindergarten includes breakfast with Sesame Street, lunch with Mr. Rogers, online learning programs twice a day, and various YouTube clips and learning videos. Shout out to the Cincinnati Zoo and their amazing zoo safari videos and activities. They're so cool. Also, the library has a bunch of virtual story times for you and is on the way for making a bunch of virtual programs for all ages. I also do flashcards and worksheets and we read books, but don't worry about screen time. My middle schoolers are doing almost all of their work exclusively online, including uh, Google Classroom, Scope and Scholastic.com, uh, iReady Khan Academy. Uh, they're reading ebooks and listening to audiobooks, plus they're video chatting with their friends. Oh, and I'm reading them a book out loud using YouTube. So they have that to look forward to every day. But speaking of books, the Cincinnati Public Library has plenty of ebooks and audiobooks to keep keep kids reading through this pandemic. Graphic novels are particularly uh, excellent reads online. Audiobooks are great for a number of reasons, but especially with a reluctant readers or readers that need more support during this time of increased independent learning. Check them out. So let yourself off the hook a bit. Technology is an asset and a resource. That said, encourage breaks and try to limit screen time right before bed since blue light uh, used in these devices tells our caveman brain that it's still daytime and it can lead to insomnia. Uh, I'll link to the sleepfoundation.org article about how blue light affects kids' sleep, but it affects adults too, so you could take that advice. Number five, go outside when you can. Go on walks, let the children run around in circles, or just sit in the sun. And while you're at it, drink water, you're probably dehydrated. Great parks are still open, and if you check their website, uh, you can see how to use those parks safely during this time. Number six, doing creative stuff counts. Coloring, painting, photography, drawing, yes! Mo Willem is doing daily doodles on his website that kids can draw along with. The library also has an awesome database called Creative Bug that you can use. Are you creating TikTok dances? Yes! Singing karaoke? Are they redecorating their room? Heck yeah! Encourage your kid to learn how to play the ukulele. Bake some bread! Everybody's doing it. We will have a country full of carb-filled uke players and we will all be adorable. Number seven, contact the teachers in your life or have your kids contact them. Confounded by the common core, we are literally sitting around all day with nothing else to do. I mean, don't get me wrong, teachers are working through this. We are planning curriculum and we are contacting students and we're grading papers and assignments as they come in, but it's not consistent. I know that the teachers in you and your students' life would love to answer your questions, even the dumb ones. Even better, we'd love to answer your students' questions. So tell them to email, because we miss our kids, even middle school teachers. I mean, don't, don't tell them that. It'll go to their heads, but we do. Oh, and also, teacher to parent, you can ask to see your kids work. If they say that they are all done with their work for the day and that they now need to play eight hours of Fortnite, that's nice. Great. Have them show you that completed work. None of our assignments are secret. Ask to see it. Even if you only pretend to understand what they're doing. And if they won't show you, well, then I give you full permission to use teacher face. Uh, like, um, you could use like this one. Or uh, I find this one uh, particularly effective, like. <laughs> so, use that. There are other resources out there, like BrainFuse and online homework help through the library if you need another resource to support you and your kids while you stay at home. And number eight, did I mention that you're doing great? Because you are, I know. There will be good days and bad days, but we are all in this together. Stay safe, stay healthy, wash your hands and practice social distancing. And for more resources, they'll be posted uh, after I stop talking. Have a great day, guys. Bye.